So let's have a little lesson on this piece. Um, this comes from my um, new book, Grade 1 Repertoire Lessons. There's a link for that under the video, but feel free to watch the video for free and learn how I approach um, different pieces um, from this grade level and what kind of things I emphasize. Uh, the book goes through eight pieces and has a couple pages of lessons and then the piece, um, kind of guiding you through uh, approximately a grade one level after my using my method books. So um, this is the first piece in the book that is like really just an arpeggio piece, which does happen in guitar quite often. You know, you have a piece that's made up of just arpeggios. There's kind of a little melody in the bass. So you can go through that and make sure that the bass voice is sounding um, very melodic. But one of the main things I'm, I focus on in this piece is playing the chord shapes on their own. Now, previously in the book, we've approached this by playing the full chord shapes. So when there's an A minor chord, we strum an A minor chord, a full A minor chord. So it's more relatable to other pieces. But there's some oddity fingerings in this piece that we should go over. So we're gonna do the specific chord shapes from the piece. So um, I have this, it written out as chords. Um, and that's just taking all the notes from the arpeggios in the piece and putting into block chords. So the first one, we're going to play the A minor with three and two. That way we can get to one here smoothly. We could slide our finger down and play this with two, but then we have to play the E with three. And then we start to run into trouble when we get to the next chord. Fingering's tough on classical guitar. Sometimes what you have to do is you have to go way to the future and say, oh, I'm going to play this like this, and then work back and say like, okay, chord before I'll play like this, chord before I'll play like this, that only leaves 3-2 for free fingers, right? Now you could jump fingers over, but that's pretty tough. The last note you play is a C, so that's ringing out. You don't really want to jump over, that'll cause a hiccup. You know, like really bad fingering. So you have to use different fingers. So I start with um, three and two. So three, two, then one. Now, some of you might find this four, three a little bit difficult, especially after coming from here. But you should practice that. It's absolutely needed for higher levels. So it's time to get used to that. Most students, their hand positions are a little bit like this. And so when they go to play like that, it's like, it looks pretty crazy. They look really uncomfortable. It seems like it's a stretch and they sometimes say, I can't do that. Um, but what you need to do is get this knuckle around here and then look, I have very small fingers, right? But, or very small hands, um, but I'm holding this and you can tap those notes there. Those two fingers there can easily reach that. Not, I can't do it if my hand's like this. It's too hard. Get this around. No problem. And then hold on to this while you're getting these two fingers here. These ones. Same thing here. We're using four one. And so I use three two on the next chord. Classical guitar is filled with these kinds of fingering oddities and you just have to get used to them and practice them because they make the, the music more beautiful. It makes it more legato from one chord to the next. And our endeavor should be to make things as beautiful as possible. Now, you can't go too far with that. Sometimes you have to use like fingering that jumps because it's just more practical. 
This piece isn't that hard though. This is only a grade, um, grade one piece. Um, some of these oddity fingerings are not so difficult that you can't do them. You should be able to do all of them, so you should work on it. Second half of the piece, I had to jump fingers there, there's no good solution. So go through, learn the block shapes. That'll teach your left hand all the shapes that will be required of the piece. And it'll also teach your hand to anticipate what your hand position will be like for the next thing. Now, when you play faster, at faster tempos though, the reality of the situation is that you kind of have to get one note at a time. If you want to be as legato as possible, grabbing entire chord shapes isn't actually the most practical thing. The most practical thing is to grab the next note in the piece. And in this piece, it's only you know one note at a time. Um, this piece comes just one note at a time. There's no actual chords in the piece. They're all arpeggios, so chords arpeggiated. Um, so you can actually get the notes one at a time. So I've made a little exercise at the bottom of the page there that shows you what that looks like by stopping on the first note of the next bar. So you play the first bar and you stop on the first note of the following bar. And you only grab the one finger that's needed. So instead of grabbing 4-3 there, I just grabbed 4. Because in reality, you have a split second to get that other note. You don't have to get it right away. Although, I mean, when you're going fast, it's, it's so close that um, it's near together, right? But you'll find, especially later on in, in higher grade levels, you need to get the notes one at a time. So practice the piece as block chord shapes and then practice it in that way. Starting from there, starting from there, and then you can uh, you know, getting just that note and then the following ones. You can go through the whole piece like that. Practice it in those two different ways so that you get good at both. Um, you don't want to practice just one of the ways because you'll probably end up with some weird deficiency or something that sounds weird because you've done it so many times like that. Practice in both ways so you become versatile and that you really know this piece and that you've really worked on your technique at the same time.